Hello and welcome, I'm Brian Lee. In this video, I'm going to show you how I create submix tracks, or in Studio One, we call it as bus channel, as well as the effect channel. Right, so this, first of all, I'll show you my signal flow. So I have a four separate track for drum kit. I have the kick drum, snare drum, crash, and the hi-hat. So as you can see here, the four individual track. Now by default, they are routed to the main master channel. Okay, so I only have one. And if you play the audio, four separate audio, okay, you can change the volume of individual channel or individual track. So during the mix, maybe I want to push up some of it, you know, and so on. Then if I have everything balanced, now I can just use one fader to control the overall sound of my drum. So how do I do that? Is to by creating a bus channel or route all the output from the four tracks here into a single stereo track. In Studio One, we can do it either by right click, adding a bus channel or selecting all four channels. Okay, and then right click on the channel and then you say add bus for selected track. So here, as you can see, automatically the output will be routed to my bus channel here. Now what happened is that is for, for convenience, I will always change the name. So I just double click to rename into drums. I use all uppercase. And then I can change the color of the track for identity. So I can change the, for example, just click to change the, something that's easy to spot. Now you can see that the output will be routed to the drum bus here. Now when I play back, right, I can change the overall volume of my drum by just riding on a single fader. So that's the benefit of using the drum bus or the bus channel in this case. Now the next thing I can do is that I can add individual effects for this drum bus instead of adding for all the drum buses, uh, all the drum channel here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to add an effect channel. So in Studio One, just right click and you can say add effect channel. So same thing, the only thing the different is that you see we only have a single insert instead of insert and send for the other tracks or the other channel. So let's say I want to add a reverb. So I add the room reverb into the insert, just drag and drop, okay, and then choose one of the preset that you think is suitable. So I use the bass drum inside preset. And what I'm gonna do now is that I can actually send from the, the drum bus, okay, in this case, into the effect channel. Okay, so that's different. There's a send. Now this is the route to the main. So I can do that. Means all the track that is sum up into this bus, uh, bus track will be sending to the effect for the processing of the effect. But what I can do is that maybe I just want the snare drum and the hi hat to have that kind of a reverb, right? So I can send individual. But before I do that, remember to rename. D dot verb for my drum reverb and if you want you can change color okay, different color so now I use the sand to send to my drum reverb for snare and for hi-hat so now let's take a listen so as you can see that I can change the amount of the reverb sand so normally this is what we call the dry and the wet signal. Okay, I can also control the overall uh, reverb amount from here. Now what you normally see in the DAW is that the sand for this hour effect would be post fader, meaning I can change the fader that will affect the amount of the reverb sand as well. Okay, but you can change it to pre-fader, which is not affected by 
the fader so as you can see here no matter how i change i still got some clipping over here so it's not suitable for this type of effect so i will use the pose which is the default setting over here so that's all for this video now as a reflection i would say the understanding of how the signal flow is so crucial that we can actually make it very creative use of the signal flow okay in this case thank you